Good morning, folks. Kirk here with Kirk Giordano, Blaster. What I'm going to show you guys today is how we do some of these intricate cut-up pillars. I'm going to do both coats right now, plus we're going to dash this. Um, we are on a job a few years ago, and we had about 40 of these guys right here. They were not as cut up as this, but they were close. So, and what one of the fellows were doing is he was using this small trowel here. And so he did most of his uh, pillars with this. He did about two. I did about ten. Anyway, uh, I went and I was talking with him. I showed him a faster way to do this. So what I'm going to do is show you guys a faster way to do this. Now, instead of using a little bitty trowel here because it fits right, or a wing tool because it gets the corners right, here's how I usually do them. Now I'm going to fill this up full, fill this up full, and then I'm going to cut back. I'll show you. Now, this mud is perfect for this right here because this mud has been mixed by a pro. And because it's so hard, meaning it's mixed well with a lot, I put a little extra cement in this mix. A little extra cement will give it the uh, consistency of butter, and it really is kind of a bluish like adhesive it really adheres well so now what I want to show you guys is, is after I get this done right here okay there's a lot of mud the inside I could I could go like this here and pull up go like this here pull up and just pull up right here Another way to do it is fill them up. They're both ways. Okay, I'm gonna just fill it up. Now I'm getting the insides. And then the top, you wanna pull it up here. But now that that's done, you say, wow, how are you gonna get that straightened out in there? Well, I'll show you how I do it. I take, I'm gonna use my finger, I'm gonna gouge it by a half inch. Okay, I'm gonna pull it straight up. There's that side, the same applies here. Use my finger as a template, pull up. Now, if you do it that way, the sides are done even. Okay, on the bottom here, I'm gonna take it a little bit like that, here. And that's done. That's ready to be floated. So what I'll do is, I'm gonna let this set about, with the uh, amount of uh, accelerator in here, I'll let this set about, half hour. Then I'm going to come now, hard rubber float it, then sponge float it. I'll show you guys that last technique when I get to that point. All right, guys, back again. In the time that it took for me to <clears throat> wait for this one, I spread the other five. Now, if you spread them out real well, there's less work when you do what I'm about to do. Say, say if it gets real hard and the sun's on them, then you can hard rubber float them. Now, this guy here makes them kind of true and plumb in case you don't spread them real pretty. But if you do spread them pretty, like I generally do, then you're going to use a sponge float. And now I'm using a brand new sponge float because I don't want the edges all torn up. Now with a brand new sponge float, and I'll go through two or three of these. I add water, this water right here. Now all I'm going to do is bring the aggregate out. This is called floating them. Okay, so I'm going to float this whole piece right here. And I don't know if any of you folks ever uh, are watching this or we're going to do this kind of detailed work but when you have all these little corners there's a lot of wires still sticking out so you don't want to tear this up because this is very fragile so i know where the wires are and so what i'll do is i'll just i'll usually place this in here and just go up just like that and with the tight edges well i have about 30 40 of these on the truck and so i grab some new ones with the tight edges i can get tight edges if i'm doing the center of a wall well, I, I wouldn't be using brand new floats. Anyhow, there it is, like right there. And what this is, is this is the beginning for the dash. Now I'm gonna still dash these. Dash means I'm gonna blow on a finish coat. And so when I blow on the finish coat, it's almost dashed right now. So I just barely hit it with the finish, and that'll be nice. A windy day like this, I don't wanna dash too much because as I hook up the hand hopper and I'm shooting this, that stuff goes everywhere, especially on windy days like this. Now we 
we're going to put a little bit on the top. See how that works? And they're going to paint this, so I'm not really worried about the color. All it is is giving it a little bit more sand, and that's all I'm doing. Giving it a little bit more sand that when it's painted, will blend in real well. Okay guys, we still have about an hour of daylight left. I figured I'd show you the ending of this. Now, we dashed the whole house. And what I generally do is, it's been drying because we've been in the sun. So what I generally do is I'll hose it down now. See, we want to hose it all down just like that. And we're taking it around the corner here to here. There's uh, all the columns on top and here. Want to follow me around here, Jay, please? As well as how we tied the belly band in to the chimney work, the chimney over there, we had to tie that in. And once you're all done and it starts turning white like right up there, you can hit it with water. That actually just make it stronger. The fellow was worried about rain. I said, oh, I wouldn't want to hurt it one bit. Actually, it's good for it. Anyhow, we're real happy with the results. We've had about six, seven contractors all around the Bay Area or around this area here, about four just coming by saying, man, why don't see how those corners came out? Those corners came out tight. They look beautiful. They're nice and uh, plumb, true in all directions. Anyhow, I just thought I'd show you the final result here. It was a pleasure doing this particular job because it really did require a lot of skill. Give us something uh, out of the unusual to do. Anyhow, my name is Kirk. I'm with Kirk Giordano Plaster. Thank you folks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.